behavior as the nation gears up for the 2024 polls. The paradox, however, is the voter disillusionment has never translated into votes for independent candidates. Today on Hot Issues, I explore why. I am Kemini Amano, and in this episode, I sit with a new entrant into Ghana's political presidential race. He hopes to come into power on his own accord and not on the wings of a political party. Question, will he succeed? My guest is Dr. Sam Sapoankra, an independent presidential hopeful. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thanks for having me. Doc, you're an independent hopeful in the 2024 race. Uh, independent presidential hopeful, hopeful, that is. But over the years, we have also seen independent candidates take part in the presidential race and fail to clinch the top prize. Why do you think your case is different? Well, first of all, um, good afternoon to your cherished listeners, and also thanks for inviting me here. Um, a lot of people ask this particular question, but you know, everything has a time. There's a time for the sunshine, there's a time for rain. I believe the time has come in Ghana politics where independent-minded people, free from political colors and symbols, whose heart is purported to do something for the nation instead of party members, take over the hems of affairs, put the structures and systems that would benefit everybody. The past 32 years has exposed the flaws in our political system. We've seen MPP, we've seen NDC. Politics, as we've meant to believe or know, is meant to improve our socio-economic circumstances. It's meant to uplift people who are in deprived situation and bring them up from their social, social mobility from where mm -hmm. they are. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. In fact, it's the other way around. Our people's circumstances over the years has deteriorated. Uh -huh. Ghanaians are going through some of the harshest economic conditions. So if anyone will sit back and think it's a status quo as usual, then the person is deceiving themselves. The time is now for us as a country to come together collectively, make a decisive decision, have a proper approach, bring in competent hands into the fray to man our affairs and tune us into the place that we're supposed to be as a country. Mm. The conditions for when a, you know, a government is changed are very similar. I can't say they are the same. They're very similar. What makes you think that they will not go for another political party, but they will go for an independent president? Well, like I said, we are not a political party. We are a movement, a movement of like-minded Ghanaians who will have selfless hearts to turn this country around. So we're not loyal to political colors and symbol of a party. Mm -hmm. Our loyalty is not a political party. The loyalty is to a nation, and that is how our politics is meant to be. We're sick and tired of having parties and candidates that comes in and say, because I am an MPP, and, uh, I'm for, I am an MPP president, so every decision, every program, every benefit has to go to my constituency, and the other populists are left astray, similar to the other side, this cannot continue. It's about time we sit down as a country, mm. come to that realization, and make a change in this election. 2024, the status quo is not an option. It, it, it cannot continue. The status quo is not an option. But how do you t convince, you know, the voter out there, voter watching us, that you, as an independent presidential candidate, you do have some weight, if put on the scale, against the political party? What is the, you know, the defining factor there? What makes you different from them? Brilliant. The current conditions exposes itself. As I said earlier, if you are going through some very good conditions, your salaries meet your needs, your kids and family are enjoying life, and you are basically on top of the world, then don't listen to Samankra. But if 
your conditions has deteriorated. I'm going to come to that point. So right. then you got to look at what are the challenges? What have caused us to be in where we are? I talked about loyalty and I'm talking about competence. What did people bring on the table? This is Ghana Incorporated Limited. We need a CEO that comes on the table with the requisite skills, uh -huh. experience, and know-how to be able to turn things around. Enough of the shouting the political uh, platforms. Enough of the gimmicks and the cosmetic work. Coca-Cola don't just go to the market and headhunt CEOs because they can shout louder. No. They go in there, recruit the right brains, the right resource personnel to mount the affairs of these corporations. And you realize after a period of while, they turn it around, their share, share, share increases, shareholders are happy, the company expands, new products are in, in, introduced, and so forth. Why did you think that happened? Is, it, is this a magic? No. Competent hands was running at first. Mm. Again, why do you think they can pay all those huge sums of money for just one person? Because, again, they respect and they believe in the act of competence to run nations. Similarly, in our sector, we have to bring that into our governance. We can't just be giving out a, a 79 or 80 billion GDP to anybody that we think and talk and shout loud. Mm, right. So, so, so the problems are there, right? People are disillusioned. Two things on that point. What makes you the person to steer us back on the right path, according to you? I come with enormous credibility. I come with serious track record over the years, proven in the private sector. That clearly puts me in poor position ahead of anybody in this contest to be able to give, give the opportunity and turn things around. Between 2012 to 2017, so to speak, I was a director for a, uh, what do you call an investment bank in charge for emerging markets. I've seen firsthand how South America developed. I've seen firsthand how countries in um, Asia, the Far East, the Arab land, and I've seen how Africa has performed. We are where we are, not because of Africa especially, we're where we are not because of aid, not because of colonization, not because of even slave trade. We are here because we are making the wrong choices and we are choosing the wrong leaders. Mm. We are poor because of the leadership that we've been choosing. So if we've gone through all these hardships, and our circumstances haven't changed because of the choice of leaders. As Einstein says, it's only an insane person that keeps doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the different results. If Ghanaians, for that matter, are looking to change their circumstances for politics to benefit them and uplift them from the social circumstances, then Sam Ankara has put himself at the altar of sacrifice, dedicating myself to solve this problem for us once and for all. Right, and so you're hoping that... Uh, over 12 million Ghanaians will have the sanity and choose right. Absolutely. And choose uh, Sam Ankara uh, for the top job in this country. Absolutely. That, that is the case. But you would also have the arduous task of convincing people that a vote for you will not be a waste of time because, as history has taught us, no independent candidate has been able to clench that top job. Well, again, like I said, it's a timing. And also, who is a candidate? Is it, I understand the timing. Who is but a you'd have to be able to convert that disillusionment into vote. Right. And I'm trying to connect that, but you haven't helped in that way. Well, I am just saying people are disillusioned. The country needs, it's, it's come to a time where a new leadership style has to be taken over. And that's not just it. It has to be what you call accustomed to a very qualified and accomplished leader. Mm -hmm. A forward thinking, critical thinker. And that's what I bring on the table. I have not just done these things abroad or elsewhere. Since I got back to Ghana, I have done great things as an individual. We've, in seen, the it, private we've, sector. we've seen it all before. Um, uh, the NDC has presented an economist vice, pres vice president or running mate. The NPP did the same thing. Uh, today he also wants to be president. Uh, they have told us this, you know, flamboyant things in the past before. You see, it hurts me when... Top broadcasters like you mm -hmm. want to mix apple with oranges. How so? Um, I keep asking, Ghana Incorporated Limited, CEO, what do they bring on the table? Is it because the person has a qualified economist as a degree or they have an accomplished work that goes with it? These are critical questions and research I'm asking Ghanaians to do. Because enough is enough. 
We're sick and tired of just picking people without we think and do the job and eventually messes us up. If somebody is credible, if somebody is qualified, their professional integrity is at stake. They take over governance and they want to ensure that what they've built over the years cannot come and fail because of favoritism, party colors, and so forth. They start up to their professional ethics. This is what the country requires, and this is what Samakra brings on the table. Mm, I see. And, and I'm still waiting to hear that point where you tell me how different you are from the other, you know, qualified economists and, and you know, economic well, transformers I am not who, just, who have been sold to us I, I am in, not just, in the past. I am right? not just an economist. I come as a transformative leader. I come as a serial entrepreneur. I come as an economist, an investment banker, somebody with worldwide experience, exposure, like I said, within that period, not a single prime minister or pre a finance minister haven't sat down to discuss policy programs, developmental agendas, and so forth. So to, to basket at all into the same basket and say, these are all the same people, I think I take exception to that. I come as a different person, and I believe that time in our history will require this kind of competence to be able to change our country around. Well, well, you say you're a different person, but what you haven't done is show us that you're a different person. No, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm hiding somewhere, right? <laughs> I want you to diagnose the problem of this country and tell us what your plans are based on the manifesto that you have published so far in dealing with the economic crises of this country. Well, first of all, let me just put it this way. We're not giving Ghanaians manifesto. We're having a contract with citizens of Ghana. Mm. And it's not just cosmetic. We're sick and tired of dancing around our issues and plastering around it, and eventually it exposes. We want to build an economy that Ghanaians control. So we have policy attached to a program or a strategic in, in investment right. that would lead to the various spin-offs that would turn the economy around. So you have a policy, uh -huh. a strategic project that would lead to spin-offs that would turn the economy around. Let's go to agriculture. From time immemorial, right from independence, our country has relied on agriculture as a backbone of our economy. What have we done to improve it? We sit in here and import about 500,000 metric tons of fertilizer on a year-by-year -year basis. And we think there's nothing wrong with it. We're importing inflation. We're depreciating our currency. We're not creating any value. We're not creating employment. So some Ankara and the Alpha movement is saying to Ghanaians, we will build a 500,000 metric tons a year fertilizer plant. And by so doing, we're ensuring that the cost of fertilizer at this current price, will come to as low as 50%. Make it accessible, available, and cheaper to our, our Ghanaian farmers. That would help us to get an increase in yield and bring more production. Mm. We're importing about 3 billion worth of food, onions, tomatoes, animal intestines. Are we serious as a country? Ghana has serious arable land, 10 times the size of New Zealand, and yet... New Zealand produces 10 times more than Ghana. Is it because we're blacks? We need critical thinking in governance. Hmm. Enough is enough. Let's call for a I second see. independence. Let's call for independence in the economic circumstances of people. So that is on agriculture. Again on agriculture. Right. We have land tenure issues. Mm -hmm. When there's noise or there's uh, confusion in the environment, investments are not attracted. Enough of the slogans. It's not getting investment into a community or a country. It's not advertising. It's creating the real enabling environment that an investor that sits in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. or sits in Ukraine will look at the conditions in Ghana and say, hmm, I'm getting the same sort of conditions in Ghana. In fact, Ghana is better. So let me take my money, my resources, my technology and go and invest. Mm -hmm. We can't just let the myriads of issues in the sector stays and think we can go around and advertise and investments will be attracted to the region. No. Mm -hmm. So, solve your land tenure issues. Today, you own a piece of land here. The next minute, somebody comes and put an injunction, I own it. The cost I make a ruling mm. is going to somebody else. Nobody would put his money into such an environment. Very well. So, so again, Sam Ankara and the Alpha movement is promising Ghanaians, mm -hmm. in this modern day of technology, we'll use blockchain to address this issue. Government is going to give guarantees to landowners of investments that goes into farming 
for a period of a while to make sure that at this particular point, for 30, 40 years in your farming, nobody will attach you on any legal issues or anything, mm. incumbrances, so that you can have the peace of mind. When you have that peace of mind, enabling environment, and you bring technology from abroad, funding would chase. The world needs food. Mm. The world needs social, social food. So we'll bring that, and then as we put those things together, a lot of funding will move into agriculture sector to be able to create Ghana as a bread basket, if not for Africa, for the entire, country, the entire world. I see. We have seen a number of uh, attempts to do what you have done uh, from uh, let's, let's grow our own food <laughs> to you know, uh, providing fertilizer for uh, farmers, which is still ongoing. Uh, we, we've also seen government's flagship uh, w w planting for food and jobs, which has contributed to the collective over 170,000 jobs that were created, according to you know the finance ministry. Uh, so, what you are you are promising as will it build on that, or you know that is completely bogus? I have said, and let me repeat again. It's about time we move away from all these gimmicks and sloganeering. Why do you call it gimmicks? Look, I have just given you the result of I am coming. Uh, mm -hmm. We say planting for food and jobs. What is the price of food now? Aren't we still important? So let's stop these gimmicks and be real here. What are the issues? We can't just advertise when the problems remain. I am saying we need to be strategic in our approach and put in measures that would completely solve the problem. So it's not just initiating a policy by backing the policy with real tangible things that would turn the economy around. The cost of fertilizer, regardless of the subsidy and so forth, is still very expensive. Our land tenure issues remain the same. It's not attractive for our young men to get into mm -hmm. it because there's no funding. These are issues that need to be addressed. And this is what Samankra is, and the AFA movement is mm -hmm. promising Ghanaians. That once we create this enabling environment, the sector is going to be attractive for investment to come in so that we can move away from this rudimental style of farming into right. serious mechanized farming where our young people can be farmers and still be millionaires because it's a very lucrative industry to get into and their conditions are favorable for you to be able to uh, pursue your uh, business peacefully and soundly. Indeed. So, uh, the, you know, the subject of food in a Greek is just one of the big ten yes. things that you want to do. Uh, yes. And, Another is on energy. Yes, on energy. And you say that you would make energy affordable for all households. Absolutely. So I'm coming to that. Energy affordable. Again, we live in a country. Do you know we produce twice as much crude oil that we consume? And yet every one of the crude oil produced in the oil fields is exported to somebody else's country. We import it back sometimes as high as 2,000% of the value. We are importing inflation, depreciating our currency, not having the best of our products. Our young people are not getting employed. There's no pass on technology. We've lost out of our resources. Which is why I'm worried when so you say you make energy affordable. Exactly. So what Samankra is saying is this. Within the first 90 days of our administration, mm. we will sign an MOU to put up a 200,000 barrels a day refinery in Ghana. Mm. We're going to domesticate the production of oil. We want to make sure that crude oil is produced, uh, petroleum products are produced locally. We want to bring down the cost of petroleum to as low as 35%. Mm -hmm. We are talking about bringing, t taking advantage of our renewable energy. Again, look, I get very upset when I start talking about these things. We're in a country where 24-hour solar wind all blowing around us. The most expensive part of all this solar renewable generation is the batteries. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us as a nation. We have lithium. What stops us from producing the batteries to match up with a God-given environment so that we can bring power, cost of power as low as 0.001 kilowatts per hour so that our people can afford power instead of all these doom saws and all these things going around us? So again, I am promising Ghanaians, we will domesticate production of oil, we will domesticate production of batteries, we will introduce renewable energy. We, and, these, and, and you want to set up a refinery in your first 90 days? Look. 
Again, this how? is how which which exactly. money? How? Not no, if that was able to do no, no, that no, no, in ninety on. days. Yeah, exactly. You see, this is what this, I'm not saying. I said we will sign the agreement to build a refinery. Okay. The refinery will be built within a period of eight to nine months, and let me tell how it's been done mm. as we speak. <laughs> you see, this is where I tell you I'm different. I am not just the talkers that had come to you. Okay. I come with practical experience. Mm -hmm. There are refineries sitting idle across the world in Iran, in other parts. 200,000 barrels a day as we speak. They are looking for a home. We sign an agreement. We, we move them, plant it here. Within a period of eight months, they are ready to go and right. flash out. So you hope to enter into some partnership. What would you give, be giving them in return in that partnership? Listen, you have your fee stock. That's the raw material. Okay. You have the market, exclusive market. What else are you looking for? It's market ready to go. Any businessman that has any sort of wealth would rush with the 10 feet and 10 hands for this opportunity. And this is what I bring on the table. Indeed. We'll look a bit more at the Big Ten, uh, you know, foundations you hope to set uh, if you were given the top job as president of this country. But also I want us to look at what you have diagnosed as the challenge of this country. Uh, one of those is loyalty, which you mentioned earlier, and uh, something you have called resource grabbing. We'll talk about that when we return. Don't go away. Welcome back. Today, my guest on the program is independent presidential hopeful, Dr. Sam Sapong Ankara. On the subject of the Big Ten, there's a lot of affordability, affordability. You want to have affordable housing, affordable health care, uh, some of which have been done already and i come to that point that these are be are being done <laughs> what will you be doing differently are you building on the nhia hold on a minute i mean when you say things have been done i laugh because we're going through some of the most harshest economic conditions our country is not affordable even foreigners from the diaspora gets in and say hey ghana is too expensive you still have your two-year rent advance you still have employees for instance, waiters and waitresses earning around 1,200 CDs a month, and their cost of transport into the place of work is over 1,000 CDs, not to talk of food, clothes, um, and the tr transport and all of those. So what are we talking about when you say it's been done? Mm. We missed a great opportunity as a country. And I don't want to start going to detail or using certain words, but we saw the mess in Nigeria. We had seen the mess in Angola, Equatorial Guinea, and all these places. We had seen the problems they had gone through. And we put our heads into the same sort of challenge and face the same problems as a country. Why do we need to do things differently? Years ago, after the Second World War, Norway was a very, very poor country. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch of fishermen and farmers. They had nothing. In fact, the whole Europe was poor. But the situation in Norway was terrible until they found oil. Similar to the size that Ghana found. Today, Norway is a first-class country and one of the world's richest uh, countries. What happened? It took a transformative leader that saw beyond the myopic thinking of eating today and forgetting about tomorrow to build something for a generation. They told the Americans and the British, we were not going to give you our oil fields and blocks to take royalties as you've done around the world. What we require from you is train, develop our people, we will take care of our own resources, and when we start producing, we will pay you from the cost of the production. Is it not a little too late for that, particularly for our oil? Well, I'm just, uh, I'm just, it's not, there's nothing late. I mean, obviously, most of the blocks are gone, uh -huh. but we're still doing explorations. There are new finds. So all I'm saying is critical thinking has to go into our governance. Enough of the short-term satisfaction. NBC had this opportunity. They couldn't do it. MPP still got it. They haven't done it. These guys haven't got what it takes to turn this country around. Mm. It requires critical thinkers, uh, competence, and the right-minded people in the helm of affairs. Let's establish this first of all. Because if they did, our country wouldn't have gone through the same challenges as what others have had. We had opportunity for what had gone wrong and what was right. And we mm. chose to go the wrong way. I see. I mean, so what, what would you have considered an improvement because again if you look at some of the agreements that we have had with uh, these oil companies it, will, it would appear an improvement on you know past deals that we've had but you think that is not enough we should you know have taken it further 
how would you have, or how would you, perhaps, if you had the opportunity to amend the agreements that we have? We don't need to amend any agreement. We don't go ag into agreement with anybody. We have the operating company and the asset company. The asset company, which is the oil fields, should be 100% wholly owned Ghanaian. Now, anybody who's worth his soft in, in, the, in the business knows that there's a 3D geological uh, survey, your geophysical survey for this area. So the product is there. You set up an operating company. You bring a consortium of companies from exploration to production. So long as the, 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 the product is there, you will get funding. So these guys now are paid for their services. They are passing technology to Ghanaians and skills. So after seven or whatever years, they exit. Wholly owned Ghanaian operating company, wholly owned Ghanaian asset company. We take our resources, we mm. boost our economy. Mm. This is critical thinking. This is what we call bringing competence into governance. And that's, we need what, and this. that's what you do differently with This is resources. what Samankra and the Alpha movement are promising Ghanaians. Enough of all these shoddy works. Let's do real work and turn our economies around. And again, for those who don't know, watch the Alpha movement. It is the alternative force for action. And, you know, their mantra is redefining Ghana's future. In case you have been uh, hear, hearing it and not knowing Redefining what, Ghana's future. Ghana's Deserve future. by this time, Nafa. On the subject of health, health, I've mentioned that the NHIA has come, it's come to a lot of Ghanaian homes, helping them in many ways. But you say even that is still not affordable in this country. How differently would you manage health care in, in Ghana? We sit in here and we have a health insurance that can even buy paracetamol. Oh, is that the case? That's and you are true. telling me that, uh, what that's do you call not, it, healthcare is good in Ghana? That's not true. If, it was so if paracetamol is your example, then it really does well, buy let, paracetamol. Well, let me, let, me, let me come in here. I'm sp figuratively, it's a figure of speech. But it does buy medication, certain medication. Well, certain medication. Yeah. We have hospitals with almost virtually empty. And you go in there and there's nothing. We don't even have a dialysis system in Kolebu, one of our biggest hospitals. People are dying. And we're sitting here thinking our healthcare is something to write home about. Mm -hmm. This is what Samantha crowd do differently. Again, as an experienced, accomplished business person, we will create an enabling environment and attract top level hospital or medical service investments. We have Ghanaians, these politicians that are rich in society, taking their, uh, taking, moving to going to London, America, Europe, even to South Africa and Dubai to look after themselves. Can you imagine if we create this as a medical tourism? Uh -huh. Look at the Nigerian community. Burkina Faso, Togo, Mali, Benin, Ivory Coast, all these African countries. Imagine we had created a medical tourism in Ghana. So I am going to push for a policy to make Ghana a medical hub. Create the attractive enabling environment. Allow private sector to be comfortable to come and establish the high-end hospitals Government would focus on creating community health services to make it affordable and accessible mm -hmm. so that people do not need to fly or um, travel all the way from Bogotanga because this, the illness they have, you have to come to Oli Kwalebu or 31st, 30, 30, 37 before you can get healed. Mm -hmm. Government will create these local top-notch medical services available and accessible to them in their communities and allow the private sector to take over the areas where is in demand and also give room for us to use our country as a hub for medical, uh, medical tourism. This is how we intend to be able to address our issues of medical situation. The hospitals are empty. There are no facilities. The hospitals are empty. I mean, basically, we need to be able to start thinking and addressing issues instead of just saying, oh, we are doing this, we are doing that. What we have done so far hadn't worked. Mm. If it had worked, it's going to understand where it has become dysfunctional. And it's the world, time for new things. The world around us is moving, and we've got to move on as a country. Right. So I see that your plan is to ensure that the Ghanaian people are comfortable. Absolutely. Your plan is to ensure that we can afford the basic amenities of life. How are you going to fund that plan? You'd realize that all the huge policy programs and attached to projects I've mentioned, I haven't mentioned government. Mm -hmm. Because when you create the right environment, private sector should be what drives this economy, the engine of growth. And again, this is not a slogan, making sure we're putting the right structures in place. Mm. Right from the establishing of the oil refinery, 
to the um, fertilizer plants all the way to the hospitals mm -hmm. are private sector driven initiatives. Okay. PPP, where government creates a enabling environment. Let's just use an example of the, uh, what you call it, the oil, for example. I told you, if you guarantee any businessman the feedstock, that's a crude oil, and you guarantee them the market, that's an exclusive market, getting the money to put the facility in between is the easiest part. Mm. And again, these are the technical skills and expertise that mm. I bring on the table as the first investment banker, stroke development economist, taking over the hems of our first in December 2024. Well, so, so the oil sector is just one bit of it's it. It's one bit. So, right? it, so, it, so no, hang on. When you say that you want to create an enabling environment for the private sector, what does it look like? Like what I just said. No, I mean, the, yeah. you have used the oil exactly. example, right? We, for instance, but not everybody is in exactly. the oil business. For instance, we're talking about affordable homes. You cannot talk about affordability if the prices of iron rods and um, cement are high. What is the key component of cement? 97% of cement is clinker. As we sit in here, after how many years of independence, Ghana still import clinker on a year-by-year -year basis, up to about two billion a year. So no matter what structure you put in place in the cement plants, they are important. They are important that the cost of what is coming out is what they are giving to you. I am saying we'll domesticate production of clinker. Again, we'll put up a plant in Ghana that would produce clinker as low as 50% of the current cost so that our cement uh, companies can have cheaper clinker and that to produce that will also be private sector driven absolutely right so 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 when i ask about creating an enabling environment let's juxtapose yeah. that to uh -huh. the done. experiences exactly. of businesses at the at the moment are we talking taxes removal are we talking you know reducing no. import taxes what exactly are you doing to create that environment for businesses you are important uh -huh. and we are producing it locally so all we are saying is stop the importation we're giving exclusivity to this local company to produce X amount of clinker a year. You are buying it so they know there's a ready market for their product. Yeah, yeah but, but what I'm saying is that in order for that company to come and produce their clinker here, you should have given them something in return it's, to create that, well, something that creates that enabling environment Absolutely, for them. absolutely. They, they, it's, they need a peace of mind. They need a, a cheaper cost of raw materials. They need a, what do you call it, available market. And these are what we're going to give them as a country. Mm, I see. Everything I've mentioned to you today is not hopus corpus, words of imaginations. These are feasibility done, project proven, tight projects ready to roll. We thought through it, we've discussed it, we've researched, and we want to do it. So it's not like the usual talks that you've heard in politics. We mean business, we want to turn things around in our country, so we have planned and we're ready. Any questions, any whatever that you need to put on towards these projects can be answered. But I'm saying to you that when the environment is enabled and attractive, mm -hmm. private sector would be the engine of growth and drive this economy. By the way, I'm the vice, I've been, I, was the, I just re resigned from my job because of the politics of the, of the Ghana Chamber, uh, International Chamber of Commerce Ghana as a mm -hmm. vice president and also acting president. I've seen firsthand what challenges companies are going through. And I know what environment to create to attract investment and also to make conducting business easy. Mm, right. And so, it, you know, I, I'll stay on the issue of taxes because it's one of those that companies or businesses have said a lot affects their business. Uh, you know, the, the growth and it impacts the uh, profitability of their businesses. Uh, the taxes, the energy crisis, at least you've told us how you're going to deal with that one. Uh, but on the issue of taxes, what would you do about that? What is the cost of taxes? Why is government taxing? Where is all these nuisance taxes, e-levy, and all these blah, 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 killing Ghanaian businesses, killing Ghanaians, and costing high cost of living? Because we are over-borrowing. Government, you see, the, the laziest thing to do to manage anything is to borrow. You are running a government which is bloated. You haven't cut the government size. You haven't cut the waste and excesses. You are maintaining all these huge people or huge size of people working. And all you do is keep borrowing. Now, if you borrow, you have to pay. So you have to find money. So it's, that is why taxes keep increasing. I said to you earlier, all these corporations, all these projects, all these initiatives are going to be private sector driven. None of this is going to be put into the balance sheet of the country. Mm. So there's no, the borrowing is going to be reduced drastically. So all these 
creativity of taxes and bringing ideas and making sure that you find money to pay the loans that you are taking from the worst, like what we are doing with the IMF situation, where there's no taxes, you still have to create something because the person giving the money wants to know that where the money will be coming from. And that's what gets them to mm. be borrowing. I take it so, as you're going to remove some taxes. Absolutely. Which as ones? many as many we'll get into that. As many as possible. You cannot create an enabling environment when the cost of producing is high. And taxes is one of the key things that causes high production. So I would make sure that production costs, exercise duties, and all of those will be heavily looked into and drastically brought down to the lowest brim. Mm. And government would forward focus on creating an environment, being the administrator, and leaving the private sector to drive the economy. So we are not going to go and borrow and build a refinery to sit there like temporary refinery to become a white elephant and go to the capital markets and borrow money and come and pay salaries. We'll leave the private sector to drive it and make sure they make their profit. There is mm. nowhere in the world that there's any refinery that runs at a loss. And yet, we have one sitting in Ghana that runs at a loss and we're still keeping paying salaries of workers. This has to end. The status quo is no more an option. Indeed. I do want us to, you know, jump from, because we can't look at each, each one of the things you, you, you hope to There's achieve. a lot you want to do. But the, indeed, there is. Um, and so I want us to move on to the subject of governance itself. You have talked about the size of the current government. And I want to ask you, who are the people you'll be working with? And what would the structure and the size of your government look like? We're looking for 20 ministers. 20 ministers. And again, what in the world that Ghana should have 125 ministers? Look, Norway, a GDP of about 600 billion, has 17 ministers. Netherlands, a GDP of about 650 billion, has 18 ministers. UK, a population of 65 million with a GDP in the trillion, have only 350,000 government, government workers on their payroll. Ghana, a population of only 31 million with a GDP of only 79 billion, has more than 1 million government workers on our payroll. How is that sustainable? Mm. How can you build anything? There's a basic principle in economics. You don't spend what you don't have. The challenge that we are facing is because of these issues that have been addressed on. So we are saying we'll cut the size of government. To, to 20 ministers. 20 ministers. Which ones we'll, are you pruning? Oh, all of those are on our website. We can go into details. We'll decentralize government into the grassroots. We'll make the DCs in an, elect, in an elective position. You have to go for elections. We'll bring the chieftaincy into governance. Mm. There'll be a permanent board on the district assemblies for the chiefs. So they can administer and chair and make sure that their communities are being run when they sit on the throne as a chief and also chairpersons of their district assemblies. Then the CEO, the CEO of the district, that's a DCE, would make sure they run those entities as businesses. We have a unique country. Uh, okay. At every corner of this country has a unique selling point. We would make sure that we harness the resources of those places. Taxes remain in those places develop and build economies in those places so that we don't have to wait for our young people to come from the north to become kayos in Ghana before we train them. But as where they are, they have training, they have development, and they're establishing industries, and they're establishing small SMEs that would help build the overall economy of this nation. Critical thinking, redefining the way we do our business, is what Alpha Movement and Savankra brings on the table. We'll come back and talk about the who you are working with on... Uh, this this project of yours and then we'll also look at uh, uh, the election itself 2024 don't go away Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest is independent presidential hopeful and convener of the Alternative Force for Action, Redefining Ghana's Future, uh, Dr. Sam Sapong Ankara. Uh, Doc, you have talked about the ministries that you, you do not wish to, uh, you know, you, you, have, you said you have only 20 ministries. 20 ministries, 20 yes. ministries. We'll talk about the ones you hope to prune. But while you're going through the list to share with us, let's talk about the people you have at the moment uh, uh, to be able to accomplish all of these things that you, you have talked about. Brilliant. Once again, again, we bring a unique factor into Ghana politics. People under normal circumstances who wouldn't even want to get into politics. Because like I said, the environment has been a little bit contaminated. So people that feel they are comfortable stays away from 
getting into the main, mainstream in politics. These are the caliber of people, well-accomplished Ghanaian individuals who had achieved in the private sector, in their various endeavors, are the people that we're going to bring on to steer the affairs of this nation. So we are going to have people with track record. Now, talking about the ministries, um, I can give you, we are going to have the Ministry of Economic Planning, Food and Agriculture, Trade and Industry, Roads, Ports, Maritime Development, Defense, Internal Security, Law and Order, Justice, Attorney General. We're going to deca decouple the Attorney General from the... Um, Minister of Justice, mm. because again, we need to work on separation of powers and checks and balances. This is what is causing corruption. We can come to that. Uh, youth and sports and sports development, local government, disorganization, like I said, one minister. We have no regional ministers. I see. Yes. So but, the local. But you, you said you are decentralizing, yes. but you won't have regional no, ministers. No, no, no. We have the DCs. Why so? DCs that will, will liaise with the minister for local government and decentralized community administrations. So mm. the, he sits in there and he liaises with them, and the DCs. Who are elected CEOs will run these communities. So look, we're, all these are provided on our website. We're going to have a press conference very shortly to detail every indeed, bit of indeed, it but, uh, to make sure that all of you have it. Let's, so let's that we talk can about the regional, re, the regional minister element. So yeah. how would it work if you know specific DCEs in all the districts we have in this country? I think over 260 of them. Uh, are working in their specific areas, but at the regional level, 16 regions, we won't have ministers. No. Who, who is coordinating affairs? The coordinating at affairs the will be level. done by the Minister of Local Government and decentralized, uh, what do you call it, assemblies. Okay. They handle all of that, so it'll be coordinated from there. But every district will be empowered to run their own show. Mm, I see. Uh, that sounds very interesting. Uh, I'd like to see how, the, how it goes. What, listen, but you also mentioned that you want to bring our uh, chieftaincy system into the fray. Absolutely. Why is that important? Why are you choosing to do that? Look, already they are development agents. Already they have the respectability. Already they control a lot of these resources in this area. It's only sensible to get them involved so that they can sit on the table and discuss, deliberate, and take actions with politicians. You don't want politicians to make decisions, and then when they go there, the chiefs are basically truncating it or fighting against it because it doesn't suit them. On the table, where everybody sits around the table to discuss the development of our locality, you have the say, you have the right to contribute and also to make uh, what they call it, uh, edge of grievances, if there has to be any. So this is a, we want to make sure that we have an inclusive governance. We want to make sure that all the resources in our country are harnessed so that we can together develop and improve our country. For once, mm. let's think of Ghana. So these 20 ministers, some of them are going to come from parliament? Yes, I mean, again, per the current constitution, yes. But again, we want to look critically into separation of powers and checks and balances. Within the first 90 days of our administration, we're going to call for, we're going to call for a referendum for, again, making sure that we totally overhaul the current constitution. But as it says now, yes, they will come from parliament per the constitution. I see. But now, who, who's, who's, whose party members would you be using for that? Listen, we, again, we're going to have our independent parliamentarians in an event where we don't have any, the NDC MPP resources is what AFA movement is going to use to turn this the country around. The same people you are, the you problem, are chastising the for with, not doing the things right. How with, can you convince the me? The problem we have is not the people. The problem we have is leadership. When you have the right leadership at the helm of affairs. That can be right. And I'll tell you why that can be right. Because you said <laughs> the challenge of this country is party loyalty, exactly. which often surpasses loyalty to the country itself. So it means that the people who you hope that will come from parliament to come and support you have loyalty to their party as well. Why would they come and support you, an independent candidate? They are playing the game they are playing because it comes from above all the way to the bottom. When you change leadership, when the leadership becomes strict, and based on expertise and skills to run affairs of this nation, it will trigger down to the bottom. So we are saying we're changing the leadership, the executive, to ensure that our influence go all the way right through to parliament to the bottom to recruit the right people, MPP, NDC, CZZ, whatever, so far as they're Ghanaians and they're qualified. We will set up the systems and structures in place to prevent them from having loyalty to party, but loyalty to government. government. I see. And will, that, that loyalty will also rub off you, won't it? Absolutely. It has to start from above. Indeed. So, so we come back to the point, same point. The loyalty is important as far as you know, government or governance is concerned. Absolutely. You, thank you for agreeing. But let's touch on the subject of resource grabbing, right? Uh, how will your government ensure that it does not happen under your administration? Let me say categorically clear. I don't know which camera. 
if you want to be part of the Alpha Movement administration, leave business and come sacrifice for the nation. We are not going to jump ourselves into this conflict of interest where cabinet ministers sit down, make decisions, and at the same time go behind and set businesses to acquire these assets. If you want to be part of our administration, forget about business for a period. We need people that are dedicated, selfless, to come commit themselves to help build this nation. Our country needs help. Our country is sick and tired of setting cabals, taking over governance, enriching themselves, their friends, and their family. We need to create wealth for all. And this is what Sam Ankara and the Alpha Movement is promising Ghanaians, giving the opportunity. Mm. Come again, 2024. If you are Ghanaian or you are hearing the sound of my voice, there's a better alternative on the table. The status quo is no more an option. But in an event where you are somebody who is clued to your old ways and you don't want to change the way you do things and you stick to the NDC, MPP again, don't complain. Stay with them and enjoy the <laughs> I see dog. I see dog. But you know, what you have just said is awfully familiar. Uh, but what you have failed to do is... Wow. If, if you want me to explain why it's awfully, awfully familiar, I can do that. But what you have explained, what you have failed to explain is how you will ensure really that your administration does not engage in the resource grabbing as you have explained in your yeah. contracts. Well, like, like I said, you are banned from getting yourself into private business within the period that you sign on to be a member of our administration, number one. Number two, we're going to put stringent measures in place that people that can even flood, flood the system and get the resources will not even have the chance to enjoy it. They are banned completely from doing private business? Absolutely. You stay, look, I, what so we have it, now if is it's four years or eight years, you don't touch private business. You, don't you sit in there, commit yourself to the mm. state, and work for the state. I see. We need to sacrifice for this country. I, I understand and, and, that, and, but why and, doesn't the issue of asset declaration work for you? Well, we'll do asset declaration, but to what extent? We want to make sure there's a holistic approach. Again, we're, we're tired of the cosmetic work. We don't want to plaster over it. We want to re uproot it. So it goes into that. It, it, we have to make sure that it, go, it has to, the systems that we set in place has to be grounded. And it starts from making sure that there's, you can't even do it in the first place, let alone do it and, and start playing with the law. You cannot do it. You're not allowed to. And again, like I said, the issue of money laundering, how the sources of money are all, all going to be rigorously investigated. They've, look, our system is here to stay. Very well. And it's about time we set up structures and systems that will stand the test of time and will leave us for this generation mm. and the generations behind us. Indeed. Unfortunately, we can't go through the entire manifesto what or contract, as shame. you say. We have a few more minutes. I want us to spend it on the election 2024. Okay. Have you gone for your passcode yet? I haven't gone for the passcode yet. I'm going for it on Monday, and it's for a reason. Why? Because our, our movement wants to show Ghana that, look, is, this is not just a one-man show. Mm -hmm. This is a huge movement looking to take over a country. So various members would want to accompany me to mm. the EC to pick up the code. So come Monday, you see us in our full regalia showing to Ghanaians, showcasing what the Alpha movement is about, mm. and why we feel we're the right people to take how, over governance. How many members do you have in Alpha? Alpha is a huge movement. Look, like I said... How if, big? Six million big enough to win you an election? Absolutely. Listen... The uh, Alpha movement? The Alpha movement as an entity obviously doesn't have the six million. But the, the base we have will draw more than 10 million votes to win this election. We have people who hadn't voted, although they have voters registered for years, have been on voters registered for the years on the voter card, we're bringing everyone, and we are saying, operation, operation vote them out mm, in see. 2024. Vote NDC out, vote MPP out. Let's bring better governors. Let's redefine the way we do things. Deserve by this time, now far. I see. Along with your nomination form is two signatures from each district in this country. You'd also need to accompany that with 100,000 CDs to file your nominations. Where are you getting that from? <laughs> well, first of all, if we didn't have people to endorse the application, there's no even point doing this campaign. We have members across the length and breadth of this nation. 100,000 cities? We'll pay. <laughs> Who is funding your campaign? So far, the campaign has been self-funded. Um, but then we believe that as it builds momentum, as Ghanaians come to understand the clear day and night between us and what they are looking at, they would want to make sure, regardless of the situation, 
these groups take over government. So the two cities contribution, the one city contribution for our young people, our students, would be what will catapult us to the next phase of the, or the, the last mile of this campaign. And that's what we're anticipating. You, you do know what the salary of the president is, right? Well, I do, yes. And, and you decided to leave your private practice uh, to, to do politics and, hope, and spend your own money on it and hope that... What are you hoping to get out of it? Look, God makes us a blessing to be a blessing unto others. If everything that we're grabbing or earning in this world is just for us, then I don't think life is worth living. Certain people have sacrificed to pave the way for us now. We've got to do our bit. And you want to tell the Ghanaian people that you are not investing this into the, the, you know, your politics and in getting into office only so when you come you can recoup your investment as that, an investment banker? That is why I've told Ghanaians that I am signing a contract with them. If I fail to honor every promise that I have given, don't vote for me again. Did you hear when somebody said they will put their presidency on the line in the fight against Galamse? But we know Galamse is going on uh, blatantly in this country. So those words don't mean anything to Ghanaian people anymore. That's You've got a, to give us a bit more as a, to why we should believe that you are leaving your successful pri private practice to come into governance, not because of the public kitty, but because you want to sacrifice for this country. That's a very important statement, or thing you just said. But we need to look at the characters or the people at play here. Where they come from, what they have achieved, and what is the objective of the message they're giving Ghanaians. I believe if we are discerning enough, we will know that there's a serious dichotomy between what Samankra is saying and promising and what they've heard before from other politicians. Mm -hmm. I am not a politician, a typical politician. I haven't done politics in my life. In fact, I'd never wanted to be in politics, but I sit outside and watch and see how this nation is being messed up by incompetent people, moving from one mediocre government to the other. This is what has motivated me to get on the fray to get things done. I come with a different perception, I come with a different notion, and I come with a different vision and ambition. Mm, I see. While we're on the subject of elections, I want to hear your thoughts on how the Electoral Commission is preparing towards the elections. Uh, what do you think so far? Well, so far, so good. There hasn't been anything on toward, but I believe that the preparatory period for independent candidates should be pushed further more than just waiting to September before that is done. We need to give room for more independent candidates because the status quo has failed, and it starts from this part. You have to create a level playing field for all. If MPP has started uh, uh, campaigning for the last two, three years, and an independent candidate has to only wait till September, three months of the election before they can know their fate, whether they want to contest for elections, it's totally out of order. It's not fair. So I believe that the uh, Electoral Commission has to consider these little things and give a level playing field for every Ghanaian. Well, because nothing, nothing stops you from doing your job, you know, your, embarking on your project. Let me put it that way. Nothing well, stops you because, as we have seen, your uh, peer independent presidential hopeful, Anakwami Bidiakon, has also been moving around with his, uh, uh, you know, his movement, the new force movement. And so nothing stopped you. It's just that perhaps you have chosen not to publicize AFA. Well, AFA is well publicized. We're a serious group. We're not looking for gimmicks or games. And... Is that what you think the I'm New Force no, I'm, Movement I'm not is mentioning doing? names. And, and I'm asking because you and the New Force Movement have had a spat over, you know, the <laughs> use of the word mask and a mask. Why were you jumping on top of the, uh, how do I put it? You were jumping on top of the publicity of New Force Movement to bring yourself to the fore. That is a shame for anyone to say that. For anybody that is literate and can read should not even look at talking like in that way. It got to a point where everybody thought Samankra was the guy behind the mask. I had people calling from different parts of the country and different parts of the world, hey, and I don't believe in mask when I'm talking about transparency and accountability. The onus is on me to prove to Ghanaians that, hey, I am not the one. And besides, I don't believe in hiding myself. Ghanaians are sick and tired of politicians hiding behind masks. Why do you think people thought that it was you? Well, because they, they knew this, this, this was a new kid in the block. If anybody who has to be president of Ghana was Samankra, 
So if there's something out there which is not NDC or MPP, then it was me. But fortunately, it wasn't me. Because you had also jumped on the wagon. No. When, when questions were being raised as who could be behind the mask. I hadn't uttered a word. I hadn't gone into any campaign trail or any or gathering even to say anything. Social media people started doing what you call it, um, this infographics. They started using AI to put me behind and all sorts. So it was on me as a person mm -hmm. to come to either accept or deny. And I did the right thing and say, hey, it's not me. I don't believe in masks. And in fact, I am doing the opposite. There is no mask promises 2024. Politicians have to come transparent, accountable, open with their eyes open, eyeball to eyeball, look into Ghana and speak their truth, give their promises and honor. We're sick and tired of promises made and promises not honored. And this is what the No Mask campaign that I put out there says. What would you say to people who say that, look, all these private business people who pop up during election period are doing this for their own gains because of the exposure it gives them? First of all, I don't blame them. But then again, as I've said before, look into the track record the credibilities of these people that come on the table. Well, the track record we have we is one of a businessman. Yeah. Are you doing this no. to propel your image I, I am saying for your own individual when I say, benefit? When I say that, I'm talking about the track record as a business person. Have they been murky and ventured into unwanted environments? What has been what they've done? This is very key. We cannot overlook if people are mending all sorts of things and they are coming into politics, you've got to be worried about it. But if a guy comes quickly clean and I've shown in the private sector how to live an accomplished life with, uh, away from all these encumbrances, then I think if he's, he or she is somebody you've got to take seriously. Are you doing this because you know you will not win, but it would give you the exposure you need as a businessman? If I, for a minute, thought I wasn't going to win these elections, the sacrifices made is not worth any popularity, to be honest. I have made a lot. I've put myself to scrutiny. I have left my good life to go on campaign trail to visit remote, some of the remotest parts of this country. I'm investing money on my own money. I'm taking food from my kids to invest into this to make sure that all Ghanaians benefit. I'm not a usual politician. I come differently. So look at me differently. Sam, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Dr. Sam Sapong Ankra has been my guest today on Hot Issues. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see this again, it's on our social media platforms. I'm Kemeni Amano, and this is Hot Issues. Bye.